All right, boys, Sam just pulled up. He's munching right now. Oh, yeah. Got the Gladi standing right behind us here. And it's got these new wheels and tires. We have these Rocktrix RT105s and some Nitto Ridge Grapplers. It looks pretty badass. Has some nice stance and nice poke. But it's still looking too stock for me in the front end. So I think today we're going to pull off these fog light surrounds, these little silver pieces right here. We're going to pull them off and try. I don't know if we're going to be able to. We're gonna try to vinyl wrap them. We do have a pretty deep recess right here. That's probably my biggest concern, is being able to bend it around that recess. This end shouldn't be too bad, but I know people online have been removing them and painting them, but we're trying to go a less permanent route here. So I picked up some gloss black vinyl wrap, and without any further ado, let's pull her in the garage. Sam's gonna finish up his donut, and uh, we'll get wrapping. Sam's outside taking a leak or something of those sorts. Not sure what he's doing, but I'm pulling out the vinyl here and I'm gonna lay it out across the workbench. What? Oh, that was Alexa, not Sam. All right, I'm gonna pull the vinyl out and unroll it here, film side up, and this way it'll flatten out while we're disassembling the Jeep. All right, so Jeep likes to not use real fasteners, so we're doing grommet removal. And that's gonna be pretty simple. If you guys haven't seen how to remove a grommet before, it's usually a two-piece assembly. So you're gonna take a flathead or a pry tool of sorts. To try to pry out this top little pin. Once you get it partially out, you can get the tool all the way around it like so and pull it out just like that. These ones come out very easily because we're working on a brand new vehicle, but most Plastic rivets should pop out pretty easy just like that. Looks like we've got a total of one, two, three, four, five. Maybe we have a hidden one down in the bottom. I'll have to go check it out. All right, so I suspected there would be another rivet. It's right here. It's kind of tucked behind. A little bit different style, but it's gonna function the same. Just come in with our tool. Fry this sucker out. There we go. Came out just like the other ones, just a slightly different style. I'm not sure if this rivet right here corresponds, but it's just inwards of the one we just removed. But we're gonna pry it out just in case. So I, I just spotted what it is. Oh, it's kind that? of like a little tooth that comes up out of this lower air dam. So I think if we press down this lower air dam, like so. I don't know if I can enough. We might have to pull off this air dam, actually. Oh, there's a hidden rivet. It's right here. Right here, there's a hidden rivet. I can't even show you the camera, but we're gonna pull this out and then the whole unit should come out really easily. There it is. Ah, oh, there's that little hidden rivet. And just like that, this whole unit panel rather, comes right off. And then it looks like we have a couple more fasteners, probably a couple eight millimeters or seven millimeters. Seven mil. All right, so with the removal of a couple more of those seven millimeter screws on the back plate here, Sam's pulling the front cover forward so I can show you here. I'm gonna grab my iPhone light to better light things up. All right, you can see that line of clips there. Sam and I are gonna take turns holding this back and releasing those with a flathead and we'll just pop it out. Oh, yep. Out of boy. Oh yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Definitely not a vinyl cutting knife here. You can see if, oh yeah, this is a little bit better. At this point, I have the perimeter all set down and I'm happy with how it's looking so I can cut away all this excess on the outside, but don't go too crazy, leave like an inch or two.
-hmm. All right, guys, in the corners here where you have material building up, it's important to make relief cuts. Just cut out like a little wedge like this. I know I just made that edge rough, but that's fine. And that will allow you to focus more on individual planes. So this plane and this, this plane right here. All right, so it's definitely nice that Vivid puts this little protective cap on here so we won't scratch the material, but it is kind of inhibiting how much the material can flex right now. So I'm gonna to try to peel off the cap. There we go. I'm gonna peel off the cap now just because I feel like I can do a pretty good job of avoiding scratching it. And this will give me a lot more flexibility. All right, so wrapping 2D material around something 3D like this and around hard corners is definitely difficult. Um, it is doable as you can see here, but difficult and it's hard to get it flawless. But I just went over to the car here. Sam's still pulling off this side. And if you look here, this edge is completely recessed. So we can actually hide a rough edge around the outside as long as it goes past this front edge right here. Folks, after messing up and scrapping the entire thing and completely restarting, we are back. Thing is completely done. I'm super stoked with how the edges all came out. And boy, did we stretch the limits, no pun intended, over here on this end. This was a really deep recess to be stretching into. It was definitely a lot of stretching for the wrap, but as you can see, didn't really mess up the finish. I think it looks great interior lines are looking good and yes we do have a few little flaws like that but everything goes according to plan that's going to be recessed and hidden so it's not really going to matter i am quickly going to go over this and and uh post heat it just so that the final takes shape and doesn't try to go back to being flat and i've made sure that all of our edges are really firmly pressed down so they don't catch and cause the wrap to come off all right goodbye ugly silver Hello, gorgeous new black. Try to catch, try not to catch any edges here. Try to put it in really evenly. Oh yeah! Yeah, baby! Woo! That's dope. That is so dope. Oh, you can see right here, this is the only flaw I'm seeing. Right there, that tiny little speck. But, Standing up here, you're simply not gonna see that unless you get down here and look under. But I'm stoked on that, looks sweet. Let's do the other one. Alrighty, so we've wrapped things up here on the front bumper. Both little fog lights rounds are now wrapped in gloss black vinyl. As you guys can see here, it looks absolutely killer. I love the blacked out look. And you probably also noticed we deleted the front license plate using a T20 Torx. We pulled off the license plate and then four more T20 Torx to pull off the license plate mount. I think it makes the front end look a lot cleaner and it actually makes me a fan of this stock JT bumper. But here's one more close up look at our fog light surrounds here. So Milne just reminded me his gladiator is outside and he told me to go take a look. I haven't noticed the difference, but apparently there's a difference between this and his gladi here. Oh, all right. He's got a more basic version that doesn't have any trims. Interesting. Very interesting. 
So things came out pretty, pretty clean on this job. If there's one thing I'd take away, it's don't over trim because you can always take more material away. You can't always put material back. Because I did mess up on one of them, I had to completely restart because I over trimmed in this area here. It's kind of unexpected how much material this little indent requires, but it is possible. Don't have to paint them and the vinyl looks pretty damn good if you ask me. That's gonna wrap up this quick Gladiator mod with JD Cars. I hope you guys enjoyed. Huge shout out to Sam for his help. And if you enjoyed this video, please go leave a like down below. Subscribe for more content and we'll see you next time on JD Cars.